that's probably the ideal scenario for most UK surfers that are just surfing when they can. In that form of, it's called period, periodization. It's basically how you arrange your training. It's just a posh word, but it means how you, how you arrange your training. In that scenario, you, you probably want to be developing loads of different qualities at the same time. So naturally, you're not going to get as good at any one quality as quickly because you're working them all at the same time. Hello and welcome to the UK Surf Show. We are your hosts. I'm Pete. And I'm Leighton. And this is the second part of Anatomy of a Surfer with Alan. Yeah, with Adrenaline Athlete. And my God, the first part went down well. Yes, it did. But (laughs) before we get into this episode, just a word from our sponsor. Yeah, our sponsor of today's show is Golden Boy. That's Golden Boy spelled B-U-O-Y. If you go over to goldenboy.com and use the discount code UK Surf Show, that will get you 10% off anything you order there. Like we said before, there's loads of classic and retro designed clothing over at their website. Yeah, they also give one pound from every t-shirt sold to the lifeboats as a way of giving back to the organizations that benefits all us water users. Their t-shirts are 100% organic cotton, their hoodies and sweats are a blend of recycled polyester and organic cotton. They're just a really great company, we really like them. They do so much from t-shirts to coffee cup holders to changing bags, Mm. changing bags that fold out into mats and everything they use in that side of it is all recycled plastic. Yeah, they're really nice, they're really comfy t-shirts as well, love them. Yeah, really good company, go and check them out and that is goldenboy.com. Right, into this episode with Alan then. So basically we pick up from where we left off last time and Alan will describe the other processes that make up surfing and the exercises that would be good to uh, to do them. Yeah, the amount of messages on Instagram and emails we've had off this off the first one yeah. saying, when's the second one out? Oh my God, I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, and Alan has also been kind enough to give us some discount codes for our listeners. So yeah, he's got two things on there. He's got the home session and the gym session. This will get you 25% off with Alan's program. And that is at Adrenaline Athlete. If you go to his Instagram page and follow the link, then 25% off the home edition is UK Surf Show Home. And 25% off the gym edition is UK Surf Show Gym. So what that means is if you're a member of a gym and you go to gym regularly, then you can use the gym program to help you. If you don't go to the gym and you've got maybe a little bit of equipment at home or just your own body weight, then you can use the home edition for the program. Here we go. So we've done uh, we've done the paddle out. Yeah, so we talked about explosive pushing. Yeah. Core. I didn't mention core as well in the for paddling out, but also catching a wave because that's quite interesting because your core and your trunk, they work in different ways in those contexts so like when you paddle about and you you see it quite often and I've definitely been like that you see people like diagonal on their board like making more progress laterally than they are going forward you know and (laughs) and like your core is there there's loads of things that your core is there to do but one of them is to protect and stabilize your spine whilst other bits are moving about your extremities your arms your legs and that is also really useful for like efficient transfer of force through your trunk so like you want to make sure that as much energy as possible is going into your paddle stroke to propel you forward not like wobbling about on the board because the board is obviously rotating as you go through the water just like you would swimming Mm -hmm. and you're also probably laterally flexing a little bit like when you pull through you're probably kind of almost doing like a crunch on the side yeah Yeah, so you you need to try and basically make sure that you have you know the ability to kind of remain stable in those situations so things like programmed in a lot of things for you where you having to hold your trunk Mm -hmm. stiff stable while your arms are moving around like pal off press variations Mm -hmm. and like stir the pots and all sorts of different things where is that when we've done the banded alphabets as well yeah the banded alphabets are a great one hard yeah, so that's an anti-rotation. Yeah, when, whenever you train, your, you don't have to do this, but it's quite useful to apply a bias that's pulling you in a direction, either making you rotate, it's making you laterally flex, so like drop down to one side or extend through your back. Have something that's pulling you in that direction and oppose yeah. it. And if yeah. you can, have add, add some movement in there as well. 
Yeah. So move your limbs around with the paloff press. You're kind of pressing your arms back and forth or banded alphabets are even better because there's sort of perturbation. It's basically like just moving around and jiggling and mm-hmm. your core's having to stay dead still and make all these micro adjustments. That's really important because that's going on all the time that you're paddling. That is happening on kind of a a level that you're not even aware of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you need to train it. Yeah. You need to train I, it. I yeah. really find them hard. The, yeah, they are the hard. They're hard. Really, really difficult. See, no, no, yeah. that's where that's where I'm the complete opposite. I find the banded alphabets really easy. Yeah, yeah. I don't. It's just. Do you know why that is? Why? Because you can't spell. <laughs> yeah, you're just doing like that a, was a really to, quick for you. Yeah, that is good. You're just doing like A to D. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. but a, we're D. missing C in the middle. A B C B. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, and then on the uh, catching waves element, you're kind of having to use your trunk in a different way. It's it's generating force. It's moving. It's a bit more dynamic. So it's kind of it, it's rotate. It's actively rotating, and it's sort of laterally flexing. So you can wedge yourself into that gap that you've just created by pushing on the board. Yeah. You know. So you you need to be able to use your trunk in that way in terms of like dynamically so wood choppers and ab rollouts and i'd probably put like loaded carries in there i know that's a bit more static in terms of what your trunk's doing but hanging leg raises things like that 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 require your, your trunk not just to transfer force but generate force mm. and move through yeah. your trunk because you you that will also help when you're actually on the wave as well so yeah the core is really important yeah. and you need to train it in different ways depending on whether you're paddling out or you're catching a wave because they're, yeah. they're doing different things it's so doing it's not different just things just one decent exercise for that it's a multiple exercises yeah for you, for yeah and you, you just have a have a core or trunk or whatever you want to call it section in your workout in every workout you do hear people like oh you just need to do like squats and deadlifts and that's or enough planks. core work yeah. well it's not because you <laughs> The whole point is that you identify a weakness in a movement and bring it up and work on it. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, the yes, obviously you're challenging your trunk when you do squats and deadlifts and things. Is that one of the reasons that he's got so much benefit out of it? Because, like he said before, he was yeah things he wasn't comfortable with and the things he wasn't doing well. Instead of picking them out and going, actually, that's difficult. He was going, that's difficult, I'm not going to do that, I'll just yeah. stick to this yeah, one. Yeah, probably, that's what people do, yeah. isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Because Until you're I put was... in a position where you're, someone tells you to do something and, and you you buy into it, you you do just tend to rely on yeah. stuff that, that you're good at, that's what people do. That's the benefit from having, uh, like you said, just so that, like somebody telling you to do yeah. it. Um, because yeah. you, like because you've taken the time to make this program, yeah. there's a certain element to this that we don't want to let you down as well, you know. And so you, yeah. you do it, like whatever you say to do, we we do it. Yeah, and it's actually benefited both of us in, in like in, in the areas that you know deep down you know you're weak in. Yeah, but I, was, I felt like I was protecting my back by not doing certain exercise, and really I should have been doing those exercises to strengthen my back, you know. Yeah, yeah, and that's just a change of mindset. That's yeah. just yeah, and also because you've been process. sending videos on yeah. on like the right way of doing it as well, yeah. and you've, you've also said like, don't do this. This is how you want to do. This is how it should yeah. feel. So you, you, it's not like you've looked online and you've just kind of under your own steam, uh, like taking somebody who's yeah. got no credentials at all, telling you how to do something. Like I, because of your background, we know that what you say to do is right and it works and it's safe and yeah. that gives like a lot of confidence in in doing those exercises yeah oh. so like my my back has just just been phenomenal it's been the strongest it's ever been mine was all right as well until i uh yeah, went on that kamikaze machine back mangler yeah. on it <laughs> yeah <laughs> the back mangler yeah um so you, your trunk and your core then that's a few, there's a few different exercises that you could do with that but it's all about pulling yourself in different directions and different stimulus. yeah yeah so like the the stability element when you're on your board paddling try and in, introduce things where you are opposing a direction of movement a band is pulling you one way yeah rotation well they're all important there's rotation lateral flexion extension all these different directions that you can be pulled in so yeah that that's the stability element and then the actual kind of strength and force generation element that allows you to move through your trunk yeah, that's more dynamic. That's like things like wood choppers and ab rollouts and you know the the banded 
dead bugs to some extent yeah, yeah. And all sorts yeah there's lo- loads of things you can do and and regress and but it's, it's important to move bugs are brilliant they are good I, you yeah, hated them good. first of all, i did hate you? them because uh, they're good. i was rubbish at them <laughs> but they're they a lot harder than i thought yeah the first the first set i find on those the first set you're like oh it's not too bad and then yeah. the second set you start to feel it and by the third set you're like <laughs> <laughs> they're only hard if you're doing it right that's what i like about them if you are essentially if you're if your lower back's extended and your lower back's off the floor which is incorrect because your your abs aren't working then yeah then it's easy. Yeah. But if, you're, if your lower back's pressed to the floor, mm. then it's bloody hard. Yeah. And you know Which that your abs the, are the working. The band helps you do that, doesn't it? The helps band you. helps you. Yeah, it, do, it does actually. It does kind of yeah, help you do that. that way, you're, yeah, yeah. Your back so you, pushes down. you're kind of working your upper and your lower abs at the same time. Yeah. Basically. Mm. And uh, you've got to make sure the band's on the door properly as well. Oh, Otherwise yeah. it comes <laughs> off. It is in the head. <laughs> Ping you in the head. I've pinged myself with bands about 15 times on this so yeah. far. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, we haven't really covered mobility and that obviously is very, I don't want people to think that, you know, I'm some kind of like strength, like zealot, like you can't be too strong. You can't be too strong. And because actually we don't know how strong, how strong you need to be to surf. Well, I, yeah. I don't know that. I don't know what, what that magic number is. I know that most people need to be stronger. Yeah. End of. Yeah. The mobility aspect is arguably as important. Right. And in your pop up, for example, you're essentially getting yourself into some kind of, it's kind of a bit of a weird sort of deep split squat of sorts. You need decent ankle mobility. So you need to be working on that mm-hmm. hip mobility and thoracic mobility as well. So all of this stuff you need to be doing and ideally sort of drop it into your day when you can. It's a pain and no one wants to do it unless you're into yoga and you enjoy it mm. most people don't want to do stretching and mobility but it is a until you realize how good it is like obviously you've changed yeah in that regard yeah. in terms of just making it part of your day and yeah. almost enjoying how yeah. you feel afterwards yeah afterwards so we were talking about this earlier so that the world's greatest stretch at the start of each exercise you've got like the warm-up and the mobility in that and i also do it every day as well yeah but the when i get up in the morning like i don't have pain in my in my back anymore yeah but it's still a bit of stiffness there and that world's greatest stretch has been the only huh. like exercise or, or stretch i've ever i've ever done which instantly helps my back to yeah. the point where it, it clicks and then i'm free it's really strange so yeah. i've been to physios before and they've given me like these very light ways of yeah, yeah. kind of working your back but it feels like i need something a bit more intense to mm. almost like shove it into like first gear, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I do that every morning, and it's particularly when I'm raising my right arm in the air, not, not the left side, it's the right side. Yeah. And then when I twist to try and get the elbow on the floor, the first couple of reps I can't do it, and then there'll be a click, and my elbow goes on the floor, and, and then the, the stiffness is gone. And that might sound really oh, right. bad. That like it might not hideous. be a good thing, but it feels great. So <laughs> I'll carry on doing it. <laughs> That sounds absolutely hideous. It's, every time, it's brilliant. And then, and then, so before when I was just doing my own workouts, I wouldn't do any kind of warming up or anything. So could that potentially make my back worse because I'm not doing any warm ups or any stretches? That stiffness is still there, and then I'm going straight into you know lifting weights straight away. Yeah, potentially. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's, you, you know, yeah, mobility is an. Imp- an important part of warming up it should be the part a part of your warm-up protocol to move your joints through and all your facets and everything else through a range of motion like a you know a full as full as possible range of motion and under control once you've kind of warmed up in terms of like you've got a bit of a sweat on then move through these range ranges of motion because that is important and then theoretically then you put yourself into those ranges of motion with load in yeah in a strength session so yeah it is important yeah it is important so that was um so we've done the the paddling out and we've done the catching a wave and we've done the popping up is that all covered yeah i would say it is i mean i've not looked into this too too much but obviously the sprint paddle if you were to just literally having not done anything else 
sprint for a wave as fast as you can for like whatever it is five six seconds mm. that would be that'd easy that would be like surfing at the wave it would be yeah if you like sort of paddle and then then it stops and then you're first in the queue maybe you'd be using a different energy system yet again which is like your super fast phosphogen Mm -hmm. energy system which just uses creatine phosphate just to generate energy very quickly no oxygen you could look at training that to be honest like uh with the 20 second like all out intervals with your glycolytic stuff you, you'll touch on that anyway mm -hmm. so uh, i i haven't looked into that in any more detail really because i i suspect that really you, you're getting all you need out of your max strength type work and pull up work when you yeah. build up to a position where you are lifting heavy mm -hmm. you are using your phosphogen system and also uh, you'll touch on it when you do like all out 20 second efforts which are technically more glycolytic like i said with energy systems it's not like one goes on the other one goes off it's more like a dj sort of mixing desk you know sort of sliding yeah sliding um scale yeah that, that's just touching on a few things that are quite important to enable you just to paddle out and to catch a wave and we haven't even looked at riding waves yet and that <laughs> yeah. you know that that varies doesn't it from just basically being able to you know hold a position and trim on a longboard yeah. to you know performing fairly aggressive maneuvers landing maneuvers yeah. you know all of those things have different strength power generation components um being able to produce transfer absorb force you have to train for them in different ways you know yeah. if you're landing a big air then you, you need to be able to decelerate very quickly and yeah. probably reproduce force very quickly so there's a plyometric element there which uh, is just a specific form of training right you, but you need you will need strong hip and knee extensors you need strong legs like mm. again it's hard to put a number on on that but you need to incorporate full body training into your training for surfing you need to be lifting heavy weight yeah. you need to be building to a point where you can lift heavy weight yeah and produce force we're looking for increasing your ceiling of force production mm -hmm. and then on top of that yeah you're probably going to need to generate that force quickly as well and that's when ballistics and plyometrics come into play I know this might be a bit of a uh, bit of a curveball question. Say someone who's pushed for time and yeah, something like that. If there's five main things that someone could do every day or every other day just to help them in general and help them improve when they went in the water, what would you say those five? Or oh. I know I've just thrown that on. No, no, no. It's fine. I mean, yeah. I mean, it depends what you mean by push for time. If, they, if they've got like two hours a week, you can do two, basically two full body strength sessions in that time you really can yeah uh, if you if you're all right someone that can't be fucked <laughs> uh, yeah well first of all to start with a low-hanging fruit you know start doing your prone if you need to identify what your limiters are like i have different limiters to you mm. as you know compared to Leighton as well you need to really have a think about when you're paddling out and when you're surfing what might be limiting you from a physical perspective obviously there's technique will make or break you as a surfer or in the end yeah because you you get those things don't you You see people in the ocean and stuff you see someone paddle out and you think oh, wow look at them paddling and they go to stand on a wave and you're like well that doesn't add up because yeah. they're just paddling like like it was nothing yeah they're going to stand up on a wave and they're shocking on a surfboard and equally, yeah, equally the other I'm way right. around yeah you can see someone who doesn't look yeah, like they're particularly strong, but their technique is flawless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, they can just do it. Yeah, so. that's why the ones when you get both together and their paddling is good and their technique is flawless, they really stand out. You're like, whoa. So my my answer to that is a bit of a politician's answer, I guess. But there is no like magic pill. That sorry, there is no like. I wouldn't say, oh, just do this and you'll be better because I don't know who you are. Like, mm. I don't know what your limiters are. But if, if you feel like you are gassing pretty early doors, then you probably need to do some energy system work. If you're just generally feeling fatigued, do some low-level aerobic work, do some glycolytic like intervals. Mm. But bear in mind that those things, you also need to probably... Mobility, I think probably everyone needs to do, unless you're some kind of hypermobile freak of nature and in which case you probably need to improve how much force you can generate because if hypermobility can, can be an issue mm -hmm. in terms of 
um, injuries and so on. But, uh, you know, if you feel like your shoulders are burning out, if you, you know, when you're kind of paddling and you literally can't lift your arm out of the water, yeah. well then, okay, I need to look at postural endurance. I need to look at local muscular endurance of, of my upper back. I'll just do that. <sighs> To be honest, that's that's great because you're you're improving probably you're improving your shoulder health doing that as well. Yeah. So my my first bit of advice would be just be fairly brutal and honest in assessing yourself as a surfer and be like and and try and think about when you go surfing, what are you struggling with? Yeah. What are you feeling? Are you feeling just generally knackered, bit bit gassed? Well, that's fine. You kind of know that that's your endurance. Or are you feeling like you can't? produce the necessary power to get into a wave okay i probably need to be a bit stronger uh i need to have probably look, work at like my short term kind of endure i need to work on like glycolytic power basically anaerobic power it really does depend which is why i've tried to cater for kind of the middle of the curve where most people yeah probably need a bit of everything yeah. well i think this is quite good because like we're the complete opposite ends of the scale yeah. in fitness like thing of like training. Yeah. And it's been good to see, I think, from two different angles of like where he's gone and yeah. where I feel like what we've found easy yeah. and what well, we've you, found. You've had to do some exercise and I've had to have some time off. Yeah. Like in between and yeah. work out it differently to what I what I was before. So yeah. Yeah, it's definitely that's massive. Helped. Yeah. That's massive. So, so when before you threw the curveball we were just about to talk about the um, like actually being on the board and needing strong legs. Yeah. So is that why we've been doing lots of um, Roma- um, Bulgarian split squats, isn't it? Yeah, I love I love the Bulgarian split squat. There's a lot of I I don't do it because you know the, there's the functional fitness kind of craze where everything's centered around doing things on one leg because it's more sport specific and things like that. For me, you guys are both at home. You have limited. You, 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 well, you've got quite a lot of weight actually, in mm. at home and stuff. But like, what are you trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> you've got quite a lot of weight in terms of on the dumbbells. Yeah. Um, I need to be able to overload you sufficiently to provoke the right adaptation. You know, to stimulate the right adaptation. So, mm. if I if I have you on one leg, I can do that easier. Being yeah. that's basically it oh yeah definitely. but also <laughs> also like you know single leg works quite good because there's less direct loading of your spine but i'm a i am a big fan of like bilateral like squats and things just standing in a bilateral stance mm. but for most people at home when you get to a point where you in, in your program where it's the, the the emphasis is on strength and force generation to some extent it always is it's not like i say it's always a sliding scale it's not like Oh, when I go in the gym, I'm only going to be doing hypertrophy, like building muscle and no strength. It doesn't work like that. No. But you're always doing bits of everything. It's just you can manipulate rep ranges and intensities to favor a certain adaptation. And people working at home, single leg work works better because you've probably got more means to overload yep. by loading up basically one leg rather than both. It will get to a point where we, we need to be a bit more clever and I'm going to have to do things with like towels with you so you're gonna have to like push into the floor against the towel as hard as you can right yeah that's um a form of isometric like an overcoming isometric where you are pushing as hard as you can against an immovable object right okay um we haven't got there yet but we're, we're not far off doing stuff and like that i mean what we've been doing at the moment which i've if um, we were in a gym sorry i'd be like we're going to just add more weight we're going to add more weight right okay. or that'll be one way in which i'll progress but obviously at home yeah, that's different. You can still definitely stimulate yeah. max force production. Is that why you've um, uh, uh, on a lot of X? Well, most of them you've said uh, like the tempo is really important. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it depends on. So the te- tempo work, um, you can you can emphasize different parts of the lift. There's loads of reasons why you might use tempo. The the most obvious is to just increase time under tension. Yeah. So you're that will stimulate muscle growth and yeah. strength to some extent, depending on how you do it. So, do I like tempo as well, sorry, because the traditional kind of, if you read like the textbooks, the traditional progression is like you, you go from like 15 to 20 reps down to, you know, eight to 10 down to, you know, fives. Mm. But if you 
don't know how to do a squat and you do it 15 times yeah and it's shit yeah you're embedding a shit in my mind that is completely pointless like yeah. i would much rather you did six to eight really Perfect. slow reps yeah. where you can you've got the time to think about where's my center of mass are my joints properly aligned all this stuff that you're taught in the you know the coaching points in the videos you've got time to think about it yeah. and then you can start to uh you know increase the reps or increase the speed but i i like tempo work because it is great for adaptation like physical you know physical changes but also it's really good because people can in terms of like technical development it's really useful yeah so we're, to give people an idea of like the tempo um, it was an example of the Bulgarian split squats that yeah. we had. I think it might have been in the first block actually. Yeah. And it was a like a like a six second lower. Yeah. And then a one second push back up again. Yeah. And Jesus Christ, that was painful. And yeah. I remember you sending a video saying it's it's really important that you do that you're really strict with the with the seconds. Yeah. So that you're not spending four seconds in, yeah, the, in the easy range half. of it that you really got to squat deep yeah and also count to six properly not not like one two three four five six yeah and and, and how you explained it was about the muscle fibers being under stress and yeah your, your muscles lengthen out and so i did that like exactly as you said and then the next day i couldn't sit down properly it makes it <laughs> immeasurably harder yeah if you the the more you flex your hips the more torque you have to generate basically to support that weight and get it back up. So the more muscle fibers you recruit, if you're doing, if you're like half repping it and there, there are reasons why you would half rep it. Mm -hmm. But if you're talking about trying to recruit as much muscle as possible, you, you want a decent range of motion because the, the bigger the degree of flexion, the more recruitment there is, the more torque you have to generate at that joint. Yeah. So, so you're, like, get, you're getting more out of that exercise. Yeah, you're getting then. more out yeah. of it. And like if you go down at an even pace, then you're spending a good amount of time in a flex position and your muscles are like like turning on and off like crazy. Yeah, there was a yeah. press-up one like that that was horrific as yeah. well. That, yeah, uh, yeah. You, when you get down to the bottom and then you have to hold in that position and it's like yeah. disco Stress stew positions. going on here and my arms <laughs> yeah. are like waving all over the place. Yeah, it's a, it's a, yeah, a textbook yeah. technique. Yeah, we've so, got we've got loads of names for you now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that so that's kind of touched on like uh, strengthening your legs and stuff like that, and that's when you're actually stood up on the board and stuff. Yeah. So is there anything else you'd want to add to? Because that's kind of the final step in the process, then, really. You know? With the 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 pull ups and the pressing, you know, don't just I don't want people just to think if they just chuck med balls around that that's all you need. You need to yeah. be strong as well. You need a high ceiling of force production you need to be trying to maximize force production first and foremost and that that's strength yeah so you need to be lifting heavy weight you don't need to be don't go mental like you'll get a stimulus from like a four to six rep rep range even if you leave two reps in the tank we yeah. haven't even talked about like rpe and things which we we can go on to but like you'll get a, stim a strength stimulus off lifting a weight that you can lift probably for eight reps but doing it for six and then you can slowly get it closer to that being a true sip six rep max and yeah, then we so can work down make sure that your form yeah is better yeah, you need yeah. force production is really important and things like kettlebells are amazing for well many things but they're really good for like rate of force development because normally they're light enough that you can move it quickly enough to yeah. elicit a certain adaptation around how quickly you can generate force mm -hmm. but they are limited in terms of they will limit you eventually in terms of your force generation because they won't be heavy enough yeah they won't be heavy enough unless you get those fucking ridiculous like 50 kg one have you seen how expensive they are as yeah, well that, yeah crazy. yeah so you, you know you, you could you could spend like a hundred quid on, yeah. on like one one kettlebell. Yeah, so, and a lot of people say like you, kettlebells will make you as strong as you need to be to surf and kettlebells kind of fit into this realm of like functional fitness and that kind of fits in quite well with surfing because you don't really want to be like a gym buff if you're a surfer mm -hmm. but you don't think of it like that. Think about it as just improving your performance. You're not, 
you're not a gym bro you, you're you mm. going into the gym or your spare room with a purpose mm. and like the kettlebell thing yeah it might it will definitely help you generate force quicker but if your limiting factor is the amount of force you can generate which most people are yeah. most people aren't strong enough mm -hmm. if you're progressing in your surfing you might be at a point where kettlebells are all you need for the conditions that you're surfing but what if the waves are bigger you know what if and you yeah, want to start doing more it, yeah. more yeah more aggressive maneuvers you need to be able to generate absorb you know transfer force and that is that strength training yeah so yeah you want to progress to being able to lift quite heavy on your legs and pulling and, and pushing basically it's yeah. as simple as that and the other thing that is probably worth because i do see this online a lot is is this kind of emphasizing training on one leg because it's like similar to surfing mm. you don't need to think of it like that right. there's no scientific basis for that there, there, but there's so many studies that that demonstrate or training bilaterally so two feet mm -hmm. you know bilateral stance like a squat provides just as much stimulus if not greater stimulus than training in a split stance right there's more recruitment as a real generally as well because you can generally get deeper yeah it's just nonsense it's just people have come up with it because it's sport specific in inverted commas yeah yeah you your role when you go into the gym is not to mimic the sport yeah it's not to mimic the sport you've got you can control the environment and you can set whatever parameters you want to set to get you to to improve your performance you don't need it to look like a sport like when people talk about functional training for example if you were to ask me what functional training is i don't i don't know what it is like what <laughs> what do people mean when it, i know it's like there's a lot of stuff around kettlebells and like flowing movements that look a bit like the sport don't worry about that because surfing looks like surfing. Sur surfing will take care of that. My my definition of functional would be a functional exercise for me is an exercise that serves its intended purpose or brings about the right adaptation. So uh, if I if I looked at you, Pete, at the wave today or you know whenever, and I was like, I, I don't know, let's say you were... You could look at me, I didn't surf. You two well, surfed. You know, yeah. I stood on the side and took I, photos. If I looked at you at Saunton, like when you're not signing autographs and stuff, <laughs> and, uh, and you, you know, let's say that you were, I just, I didn't feel like you were utilising your hips. You were quite, you know, on, on the toe rail all the time or something, I don't know. Yeah. So I was like, you're not really engaging your hips. And then if I saw that manifest itself in the gym, in a squat, for example, you were coming off your heels and leading with your knees, all these things that are indicative of, they could be technical, but it could also suggest, oh, you might have a weak posterior chain. You might have. Right, so for you, a functional exercise would probably be a deadlift variation, like just a standard, bog standard bilateral deadlift variation. To most people, that wouldn't be like, that's not functional because it's not mm. chucking a kettlebell around or yeah, it's yeah. not in a split stance, but it is functional because it has a purpose and yeah. it will improve another aspect of your training or your performance. So like people get sucked into this functional thing because there's videos online of blokes in bodies like tumbling around on the sand like getting into surfing stances yeah most people don't need that but most people just need to be more robust more strong and they need to generate force quickly stuff like that you just do when you're surfing and that's when you will get better at those yeah. kind of highly nuanced flowing movements that you need that you cannot replicate that so don't even bother trying the closest you can get to is on a surf skate i mean today <laughs> Mm. I I use my surf skate probably like three or four times a week and I'm like really, really trying to like mimic the arm movements and things and I've gone online and looked at, you know, on base, on B surf are really good. I found for like yeah. surf skate tutorials and the coffee cup and all that absolutely amazing information. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you get on a wave, it's different. Like yeah. today I was not... <laughs> following that advice at all even though i do on a surf skate yeah because it's a new environment and you get used to it like and and trying to mimic surfing in a gym is just nuts you don't yeah. need to do that and no. as strength coaches you you don't select exercises because it looks like the sporting endeavor no. maybe a little bit towards the end of it and and that will just be the sporting endeavor itself yeah but you you, you select it based on it's called dynamic correspondence so 
there's multiple criteria in terms of like the amplitude and the direction of the force, the regime of muscular contraction, all this stuff. So it doesn't need to look like surfing. Yeah. It needs to serve a purpose within a training program. That's it. Well, what you said there about surf skates, because we had three surf skates there today. Yeah. And each one of them moved differently, so yeah, that right, yeah. you can't replicate. No, you it. can't. You, you yeah, can't exactly, exactly, exactly. replicate. You can replicate the movement slightly, yeah. but you can't replicate what it's like to be be surfing. And even like we've spoke about before, even like on a balance board, you can't no. replicate that. I think yeah. you could on a balance board, but you'd have to have a balance board that was balanced on something like a football, so it moved in all directions. Yeah, well, that, that's a good point about the balance board. Is uh, that's a a really popular one balance training is super important um it should be included within your sessions where possible perhaps in a warm-up as it's almost like an activation type exercise but when people are using it to get stronger that's just absolute nonsense because you it's newton's third look you can't apply enough force into an unstable object to recruit you just can't it's just you cannot it's not the same kind of uh, pattern of recruitment. You cannot, can't recruit anywhere near as much, so you can't generate as much force. So there's no st- there's no strength stimulus there. No. There's no strength stimulus. So like, get rid of the doing stuff on wobbly shit. Don't do that. <laughs> do, do it, but realize that that's there for a different purpose. Yeah, not it's there for balance and proprioception, and that's all really yeah. important, but not for strength. Like right. that does my head. What I don't like is. is is people being taken for a ride on social media by like that looks quite cool and it looks like surfing so i'm going to do that and it's normally endorsed by a surfer so you're like well he or she does it so that's that's good pro surfer, yeah. Yeah. whereas actually yeah. what you need to do is the boring shit basically yeah. in gyms and at home yeah and you'll you, it'll get to a point where you're noticing a difference when you're surfing and it will validate you'll validate in your head and it won't be boring because you'll see value in doing it yeah but initially, you might be like, "I hate this. This is shit." Yeah. But- so a few a few questions that we 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 didn't have, we didn't have time to to put out and ask. So sometimes we ask yeah, our, yeah. Our, our listeners. But we got a, like a, a few questions that um, we kind of think might have been asked. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, one of them: Can you just get away with doing yoga? Uh, Which I think you might have just answered. Well, <laughs> yeah. I mean. I don't, yeah, yoga is a really useful tool. You've got to be careful of it. I don't want like a, a mob of <laughs> yoga teachers, yeah, yeah, to, a uh... mob of like man buns driving <laughs> up the M5 to, but no, no, yoga is an ex- like, amazing tool. Uh, but it, you should view it as just that, it is just a tool. And when people focus, because I know the night surfer Lloyd, he mm. said that all he does is yoga mm. and that's fine because he might well for the conditions for the current level that he's at and the conditions that he surfs in that might be all he needs to do because he might have the requisite level of strength and uh rate of force development and all this stuff we've been talking about Mm -hmm. and obviously technical ability to surf the breaks that he surfs yeah Uh, and he might just feel that the yoga keeps Mm -hmm. him mobile amazing brilliant but when you put too much emphasis on one thing, it probably means you're not placing enough emphasis on other stuff. Right. And with yoga, I mean, if you just did yoga, if most people just did yoga, it's a you're tricky one. To word it, no, no, you? yeah, I am because um, <laughs> the, the, it's the whole flexibility versus mobility thing. Right. Flexibility, getting yourself into passive end ranges of motion that are really impressive Mm. and it's not always passive there is a degree of control in fairness but Mm. it's not the same as being able to control load into those end ranges like you physically be able to control yourself into those end ranges we have a reflex we actually have a so we have the stretch reflex that's there to protect us yeah you know if we've got tiny little sensors in our muscles that will detect how much a muscle is stretching and the rate at which it's stretching and if that crosses a certain threshold basically mm-hmm. you will there'll be excitation of muscle fibers and contraction and it will stop you from overstretching right your muscles have a length tension relationship and that's inverse normally so it means that the longer a muscle is, the less potential it has to generate tension. And that can be a problem if you're a yogi that 
you can achieve these amazing end ranges of motion. Mm -hmm. And let's say you're dumped into that position by a freak wave or something, and you don't have the necessary tension, the ability to create tension, that can cause problems. Yeah, whereas a mo somebody mobile a, gr- a good example of that would be a, a weightlifter mm. like do, do they look like they're inflexible not really like mm. they you know you're able or even just someone that can do a bog standard goblet squat or a front squat or something you're decelerating a, w- a weight controlling a load that's above your body weight normally by like you know at least 0.5 to 1 times your body weight for yep. most people mm-hmm. control it into a deep squat with good weight distribution, thoracic extension, like that that to me, yeah, is is all you need to be. Do you need to be any more mobile than that? That's yeah, that like, makes sense. I can't remember the last time I needed to put my <laughs> legs behind my head. Since maybe uni or something, I don't know. You'll find but out like, tonight. What's that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no. So uh, yoga's amazing, but if it's all you, you rely on is as something yeah. else as part of your yeah, you need to be able to control. If you've got like really, if you're really flexible and you can hit all these end ranges of motion, that's great. But make sure that you can also you have the requisite strength to control yourself as close to those end ranges as you can. Yeah. Because ultimately, you've opened the door to potential injury. I'm not going to like say that you're going to get injured, but there is potential there. Right. Okay. High being hypermobile is never, well, it's not that it's never a good thing, but you, you just need to be able to control it. And yeah. I'd much rather be, if you do strength training, you'll become less flexible. Right. You will be, but you'll be more mobile because you'll be able to control yourself into these right, okay. end ranges yeah, that, that are less, sense. but you don't need that extra bit. Yeah. You, don't you really need don't need to. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, an, another one. Would you prepare differently for a surf trip compared to just staying surf fit all year round? Uh, yeah, you, you probably would, yeah. So I think I mentioned right at the start about uh, personally my programme and, and your programmes are sort of predicated on the basis that or, or I've pulled them together on the basis that the surf could be good at any moment in time and you want to be like at a certain level yeah. and you'll always, you know, you'll be progressing mm-hmm. block by block week by week, but it's keeping you within, you know, sort of 20, 10% of your absolute best. Let's say just, yeah, you know, nominally, that's probably the ideal scenario for most UK surfers that are just surfing when they can yeah. in that form of it's called period periodization. It's basically how you arrange your training. It's just a posh word. It means how you, how you arrange your training in that scenario. You, you probably want to be developing loads of different qualities at the same time. Right. So naturally you're not going to get as good at any one quality as quickly because you're working them all at the same time. So yeah. It's a different sort of periodization, but it works. That's called conjugate, basically. It basically just means like training several, like speed and strength at mm-hmm. the same time and, you know, different variations in different sessions and things. But if you, if someone were to come to me like Sponge potentially, mm-hmm. or if someone were to come to me like, oh, I'm preparing for the ISAs in three months or I'm going to Bali in three months and I want to be like in tip top shape and you know go through the process of identifying what the weaknesses are and things but let's say it's a fairly bog standard progression you know they need to be kind of more explosive on on the wave or whatever you'd probably plan it in a different way uh you do like a block block by block each block would kind of complement the next it's called phase potentiation where like one block uh, will be working on strength and basically just strength only really right. a few bits like you'll, you'll maintain what you've done in the previous block which is probably building a bit of muscle maybe yeah and then you'll be focusing on strength so low repetition high weight mm-hmm. relatively slow speed because it's obviously high weight and you're sort of grunting through it You're right yeah. with good technique hopefully but and then you've potentiated the next phase basically you, you've 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 improved your potential to excel in the next phase, which would be like speed and power. You've increased your force production ceiling. So there's more force available for you to express quickly. Do you see what I mean? So like if I can get you strong in one block yeah, and then make you fast in the next block or more powerful in the next block, or sorry, make you fast, Mm. then you'll be more powerful because 
you're stronger as well. Yeah. Does that make sense? So, yeah, so you, you kind so, of, um, you're like isolating different areas. Yeah, Instead yeah. of like at the moment we're kind of working a bit of everything. Yeah. You so, you take everything and then look at it in a bit more detail and concentrate on that area. Yeah. And then concentrate on the next area for if you're training for a specific and trip the, or competition or... Yeah, exactly that. Yeah. And there'd be a tape, you know, so basically I'd be like, right, Leighton, six weeks we're focusing on strength. It's a strength block. Yeah. And then you're going to have a little, probably a little deload, and then we're going to go straight into kind of speed work. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, different ballistics and plyos and things like that. Yeah. But you'd still be maintaining your strength. It just wouldn't be the emphasis. Right, okay. And then it'd be like, right, now you, you, the tournament or the tour is two, three weeks ago. We're going to taper. So basically you knock off a load of volume and keep a little bit of intensity in there generally so that by the time you get to where you need to be you're fully tapered or deloaded yeah and that's basically how it works so you've, sort of. you've recovered in that time ready to yeah go into the competition so that those are it. two different forms of arranging your training yeah so you, you either do the bit the what we're doing which is where you keep your baseline relatively high yeah at all times so at any time you're ready to go in the sea yeah and have a good session Unle- unless you've worked out on the same day yeah yeah that's yeah <laughs> so that is probably advisable in that instance to like i say have a mini taper and by by taper i just mean take a session out yeah you know I and then do that. leave it 48 <laughs> hours and then you'll be you'll be pretty sweet yeah. by the time you've built up a baseline of preparedness let's call it yeah just take out a session and you you should be fine yeah well do you know what saying that like over the last two weeks because of like my back and other stuff i've taken out a lot of sessions yeah. to be honest <laughs> yeah and i really noticed the difference when we went surfing on wednesday evening what in a negative way. yeah in a yeah. negative yeah. way yeah. Um, yeah so but i didn't i haven't been i like you know from chatting to you i haven't wanted to push anything and we've like no. been really careful with my back and everything like that and different yeah. bits and pieces and uh and you, you know how quickly you gained that that ability yeah that so, so so basically i know I, I still feel stronger yeah, yeah i still feel better than i felt before yeah but i know for a fact like so come monday when i i feel like i'm in a position where i can start going properly again and come yeah. monday i should be able to make a difference and yeah. then next surf will feel even better again yeah yeah you know t- t- tapering is probably one of the most misunderstood and heavily researched areas of like sports science and people don't really know to be honest still what what the (laughs) it's just highly variable but um it's a fine balance between tapering and making sure some someone peaks at the right time Mm -hmm. but if if you go too far then you actually start to detrain and get worse what about when people talk about stuff like muscle memory yeah that's uh that's a different that's that's different. That's that's more like is that, you, you've is got that an embedded an movement thing? pattern. Is it an actual um, thing? Or? Yeah, mu- muscle memory. I, I mean, that, uh, it depends what you mean. If if you mean like just being able to, because you you can embed movement patterns. You can learn a new movement, and therefore next time you do it, you know how to do it. Yeah. But what will change is like how heavy you can do it or how fast yeah. you can do it. That's what. But the actual movement pattern once it's embedded is normally in there for yeah. for good really unless you don't do it again for like 20 years or something but mm. i think that's what most people mean when they say muscle memory yeah. so what, what about okay what about this one then like a checklist so oh. what are the f- top five physical qualities you need to have to be a good surfer uh five okay so you need to be you need to have a strong vertical pull. That's fairly, it's fairly well established in, in mm. whatever literature I've read. It also makes absolute sense. Yeah. So work to being able to do five strict pull-ups. To most people, that's a challenge in itself. Yeah. If you can already do that, great. Start doing more weight. You don't necessarily need to do more reps. That is a way of progressing. But if you can do, you know, five, eight strict pull-ups... Mm-hmm then um, maybe try doing those five with a really slow tempo or add a weight belt or start progressing towards strength and, you know, three to five reps really Mm. heavy. Yeah. I know that sounds really onerous, but it's totally doable. It's totally doable. You just need to 
plan yeah plan for it work and, yeah to yeah be able to do that yeah and if you can't like i said before then heavy horizontal rows yeah will also help um you need an explosive push you need to be able to generate force very quickly in your pop-up um so for that also again like i said the stronger you are mm -hmm. the more potential you have to generate force quickly you need still need to train it but so yeah, uh, make sure you can do eight to 10, I would say strict push-ups. Yeah. Again, there's loads of ways you can regress and progress those and couple that with moving stuff fast. Yeah. Lift shit heavy and lift shit <laughs> fast, basically. You know, so lift heavy shit probably quite slowly. Yeah. And then Speed quite up. a lot lighter shit fast. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, <laughs> ballistics, um, explosive push-ups, work your way down towards the floor or get a med ball and have someone drop it ideally not on your face but towards your chest so you, and then push it yeah. as high as you can into the air fire your hands through the ball as quickly as you can or chuck it as far as you can just from a kneeling position right. stuff like that that's it's applying force in the same direction yeah as fast as you can so you need to kind of address both ends of the force velocity curve if you like so right, you're okay. moving you, you're strong but you're also quick yeah and there is more of an emphasis on speed in the pop-up you've yep. got about 0.5 to 0.7 seconds on the, like in the, the ultimate pop -up. the the um the perfect part of the wave that's how much time you've got that's what it seems like based on like the biomechanical bits and bobs that i've read right. and then yeah and then getting that pop-up is really important to allow you to get through to generally your front foot and 70 odd 72 percent i think of your force goes through that front foot in the in the catch phase right or the reach phase or whatever it's called that second phase after the put the push right so you've got to get your center of mass mm -hmm. further towards that front foot so in order to do that it's got to come through underneath basically underneath your chest yeah so you've got to be strong enough to push up and give yourself enough of a hole to get through yeah to get that front foot down and because yeah yeah otherwise you'll skim off the back of the board basically in yeah. most most scenarios i would have thought yeah. so um that is important so that's two i've kind of waffled through them but that's two yeah you need to be able you need a strong core in inverted commas and be able to transfer force through multiple multiple planes and to be honest strong in your in your legs as well and be able to transfer force through multiple planes we haven't really we haven't done a talked a great deal about lower body but yeah mm. your, your primary movements should probably always just be in one plane you know just straight up and down yeah sagittal plane work it's called but yeah you know that's, bog standard that's, squats that's and sp enough. split squats but then lots of accessory work that works different lateral planes and um, that's really important because you do find yourself working. It's a multi-planar yeah. exercise, isn't it? Surfing. Mm -hmm. So uh, you need to be mobile basically all over, really. I mean, I think th your ankles are important in, in like deep squats. Ankle mobilities make or break or can make or break. But yeah, hip mobility is important. Yeah. So there's a multitude of stretches we've already referenced. But yeah focus on your hips your adductors can be quite limiting in deep squats mm -hmm. make sure you've got mobile ankles make sure your thoracic spine's mobile you need well-developed aerobic system and glycolytic system in those two in particular yeah and again we've given you some exercises around them so like aerobic system a good sort of a quick and easy one would be like a you know six to eight minute time trial bit of a rest and go again yeah you know, that's a really nice, efficient aerobic workout. And then the glycolytic stuff is more the interval type stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, 20 seconds on or 30 seconds on. and A hundred percent. Yeah, 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 yeah. As much as you can sustain for that time period. Yeah. So don't go like so hard that you can't finish the, well, that'd be quite unlikely to be fair. But, you know, that's important in the six to eight minute intervals. You don't want to go so hard at the, remember it's a, it's a steady state effort. Go as hard as you can for that time period. Right. So pacing, but that's something that comes with experience. Yeah. Go five, on. Was that five? I know that's difficult. Isn't it? I could probably do 20, but <laughs> you, you need to be robust as well. And, and there is a high prevalence of shoulder injuries. 
I think the main injuries um, typically are like more traumatic sort of knee injuries and things from collision, um, you know, high impact, yeah. dropping off waves and things and, but, um, and you know, awkward landings and stuff. But and for most of us, it'll be shoulders. As well. like, like just wiping out. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, yeah, you do need to be robust. Don't you? Most but, of us, it'll be overuse stuff in our shoulders though. Right. So as a rule with that, stretch what you can see in the mirror. So your, your chest and your lats. Don't forget that, Obviously, everything we do in life is in front of us, so we are naturally quite internally rotated. Mm -hmm. We're not really evolved to be like that. And then also, then we'll go surfing, and we're using our lats. They are they're big muscles, and they are internal rotators. So you got to stretch your chest and your lats and your internal rotators, and strengthen what you can't see yep. in the mirror, basically. Mm -hmm. So what? But that. You, you'll take care of that by doing like the bottle hops and all yeah. the local muscular endurance stuff you'll take care of that so that's that's all good yeah we've pretty much covered everything I th you think i reckon well, we you, you i'm see, like you, i say you could go on about yeah. this all all night but it just gives you an idea of like actually it's a sport like any other sport you need to prepare for it there's an element of general physical preparedness which yeah. is basically what gym work is i yeah. think that's the difference now between um now and say 20 years ago or so yeah is the you look at the pro surfers now and they're like athletes yeah because yeah. where they used to just surf you yeah. know do a little bit of workout whatever yeah. skateboarders the same used to just go skateboarding now your top skaters like your N niger houston's and your leticia buffons they're athletes as well because you see them in the gym yeah, training yeah. and yeah. doing everything like they, they'll be i don't know what, what the setup is in the u.s it's largely driven through the college systems the olympic side of things but now that's an olympic sport skateboarding in the uk they'll be the institute of sport will be kind of seconded into the skate whatever the governing body is for skateboarding and they'll have people like testing what was the name of the girl that Sky Brown. Yeah, they'll yeah. they'll have people like testing a vertical jump and stuff. It will it will go that way because it's an Olympic yeah. sport now. Oh, they'll do that with sure. surfing as well now. So you know, hopefully, it will give surfing in the UK a massive boost as well. Yeah, there'll be someone in from the EIS, the English Institute of Sport. There'll be someone embedded in GB surfing. I probably should have checked who that is. To be fair, but I don't know. I'd imagine that a lot of his or her work will be just dealing with the fact that they're traveling all the time so there's not much you can do in the way of intervention it's not like british cycling where you have them in the gym at a certain time every day and then you can run testing protocols and stuff so he or she will have to do what he or she can in the time that he or she has those surfers so it'll be a different approach you've got different restrictions but yeah i mean it's an olympic sport now so there'll be a probably a bigger drive on the performance side of things yeah. at that level mm -hmm. but don't discount yourself from doing stuff like that because you're not an olympic surfer it's a basic you know w what they're doing will also benefit you yeah it, it's just really important and it's it's important to not get sucked into the whole like surfers don't really strength train and it it's it's so it's really important to strength train just for longevity but also it will improve your performance. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's what you said when we were at the at the beginning of of this training. That you said this is something you can do forever. And yeah, it's not just gonna. Even though we are training for surfing, yeah, it does impact just your general yeah massively yeah. fitness. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So yeah. if so, we're going to kind of announce something, aren't we, with what you're about to launch? Yeah. So if people want to want to actually contact you and be trained yeah. by you because uh, you clearly know what you're talking about and we can kind of credit to that can't we it's just been amazing for us hasn't it yes <laughs> <laughs> we 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 uh swear at alan a lot on, on the group chat and yeah. call him names because yeah. of how much pain we're, we're in when we're working out and stuff <laughs> but the progress has just been phenomenal yeah yeah it's been it's been been a so, fun process. Well, like Alan said, we've caught, sort of been as guinea pigs as well, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, definitely. For, yeah. So you've been trying it out. Definitely. And I wouldn't be comfortable releasing anything if I didn't have that information and feedback. Yeah. yeah. Like, the, yeah, uh, that's a really important part of the process. But uh, yeah, I've, I've started, it's called Adrenaline Athlete. 
Adre- have I said that right? Adrenaline yeah. athlete. It's <laughs> your, your company. Adrenaline. You what you adrenaline. Want. <laughs> so uh, on Instagram, it's, I think, it, well, I should know this. It's adre- <laughs> adrenaline.athlete. And the website, which may or may not be live by the time this goes out, but it will be adrenalineathlete.com. And basically what I've tried to do, or what I have done, is create an, an ongoing program, so it's just constantly rolling, uh, that you can basically drop in and out of because within that program you've got flexibility to choose different progressions and regressions. Yeah, uh, it, it kind of ticks all the boxes in terms of what I would think, what I think the middle of the bell curve in terms of most surfers in the UK need to address. It, it addresses all the things we've spoken about tonight. Um, it's just delivered by like a third party app, which is really, I don't know, how have you found the app? All right. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and, uh, and there's a, there's like a Facebook group off the back of it. I, I am like a proper nerd about strength and conditioning. So like if anyone ever wants to talk to me about, any aspect of strength and conditioning. His phone number is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, get in touch on, 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 you know, message me on, on Instagram or my email address, which will be on my website that isn't live yet, but it will be. <laughs> and then, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk in the, in the group. I, that group will be, you know, supportive. It's, um, I, I want to know what people want to know about in terms of like questions they want to know about training. Cause I'll just put that out on Instagram as often as I can and answer training questions and kind of debunk a few myths around training and stuff like that. So, um, I'm always open to questions. I love talking about stuff like that, but yeah, the program itself is just rolling and easily accessible. And so um, it's not just going to be specifically for surfers. It's anything. By uh, and athlete. Yeah. I mean, initially, initially it's for surfing and then when i get time i'll start looking into other sports other kind of adrenaline sports yeah i quite like to do one on climbing yeah but yeah and initially probably for the next year really because there's british cycling there's stuff going on with like the fa there's all that i've got i'm quite busy so like <laughs> like I, I, without sounding like a knobhead like I, <laughs> it's just the way you said they're quite busy and your eyes rolled no no i'm just thinking like, like i'd love to do a climbing one but have i got time i need to be more realistic and yeah. so i've set it up in a way that probably, I'll, I'll put the programming time in. to see the wife as well oh well, yeah you? exactly yeah yeah <laughs> the programming goes in and then yeah I'm, I'm i'm around to like support and answer people's questions and things and i i put a lot of time into developing the videos so that they're really prescriptive video so you yeah. feel like you're being coached yeah um, they, they, they are takes, really good actually They're yeah. really well really um, filmed and everything but i will answer any questions mm-hmm. and because i've been able to do that obviously i can you know it's really affordable mm. i don't actually know what i'm going to charge it but it's going to be <laughs> it's going to be cheap like 15 quid or less you know so yeah, um compare you know if you can't afford the best way is always to get like a one-on-one if you can afford to go like like um to the surfer academy guy yeah amazing amazing if you can get one-to-one support yeah you know and he'll be able to sit down with you spend some time identifying yeah weaknesses and and going from there amazing but if you can't Mm -hmm. then this is probably the the, the right thing yeah. to do yeah like so, if um, you a can't afford something like that or b you haven't got time to do the you know the yeah. one-to-one where you just want to look at something and you go right that's yeah, what yeah. sort of thing i've got to do yeah so you're going to yeah. design programs which are which will fit like the kind of the majority of surfers yeah it, and, and and they can they can pay for that per month and it will just keep changing every month in like different blocks like we're doing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and you know, if people want have questions about how to specifically prepare for a holiday or whatever, yeah, ask me because I, like I say, I'll I will just talk and talk about it as you've discovered tonight. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, yeah, it, it's just something I wanted to do. Uh, it was a bit of fun initially, and you then should, it sort of you should clarify that as a surf holiday, not I'm going to. Oh Egypt. yeah, yeah. I don't want. Well, yeah, I'm going to ripped. Egypt. What do I need? Getting ripped for Ibiza. <laughs> That's not my sort of vibe. But um, <laughs> and then I again, I haven't decided. I don't know how much because I haven't decided the cost yet. But it will be fifteen quid or less. I would have thought uh, a chunk of that will go to Surfability UK. Amazing. We met them. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So I spoke to Ben the other day. He's a really nice bloke. He's a lovely guy. 
Yeah, it, you know, it aligns with one of the best bits of my job at British Cycling is working with the para athletes, and it just sort of struck a chord with me that that episode. So a little bit will go to them every month. Amazing. That's nice. Um, that's great. That's yeah, a, that's a like a like a really positive thing when when people pay their money they know that it's going to that as well yeah like they're not just doing it for their self and are they do you know yeah that that episode i was still affected by that episode yeah <laughs> yeah you were saying it later and was saying earlier yeah. yeah it's it's yeah i mean if i can only compare it to the stuff that i've done yeah with para riders and it is definitely i mean also just it, i find it amazing what i mean laura faki she's a blind uh, tandem rider she can like box jump she can do box jumps which still <laughs> you know i've watched her do it 50 times and it still blows my mind as much now yeah as it did the first time i saw her do it yeah it's just phenomenal yeah, like it takes a certain amount of coordination to have to do yeah, that. yeah yeah amazing yeah, yeah absolutely these, these amazing people are incredible aren't they when, when they're like that yeah yeah so yeah so adrenaline athlete's going to be coming out Ad- yeah. soon soon <laughs> or yeah. maybe out already yeah, 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 yeah. You we're, just have to type it in and search. If it's yeah, not, yeah. it's not out. If it is, it's out. <laughs> Adrenaline.athlete for Instagram and I'll just be putting up like useful training advice uh, and I'll respond to any questions that I get about surfing, obviously. Yeah. Be, yeah. <laughs> or, or climbing, I guess. You know, any, any. yeah, I'll have a look at it. And then, yeah, adrenalineathlete.com will be kind of where everything's housed. But it'll be run through a third-party app called Train Heroic, which is just really easy to use. It's a good interface and yeah, yeah. Um, it is a good. chat like, Everything was timed. Uh, you, could, you could actually tick off each set as you did them. So you, yeah, you know, it's yeah. not like you've forgotten how many. Yeah, sets you can leave done. notes for your trainer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, there, there is always fairly entertaining reading. Yeah. <laughs> and I do read every one as well, like... Uh, and I will read everyone when, you know, if and when people join the program. Yeah. And I will respond. I just, you know, I like talking about stuff like that. And yeah, they've got a rest timer on it now as well. Did you notice that? No, I didn't notice the rest yeah, timer. Yeah, yeah, no. So you can be strict with your... <laughs> yeah, we have to do that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it, it is a really good app. It's probably one of the better ones that I've used actually over the years and stuff. So yeah. Yeah. So there yeah. you go. That's it. Um, that was mega. Thanks for that, Alan. Wow. Like, he knows a lot. <laughs> <laughs> he knows a lot. <laughs> yeah, he's a super, super nice guy. Um, like we've said in these last two episodes, we've been doing the training and it's it has transformed our surfing, hasn't it? You know, it's... Yeah, massively. I mean, yeah. from like just paddling into waves that I wouldn't have even paddled for before and getting into them now catching waves easier just in general and my fitness it's like I was trying to do something the other day and I said to I said to Leighton oh something I used to find this difficult um like about something or whatever it was I can't even I don't even know what walking up the stairs yeah it might have been that <laughs> <laughs> but I said something and your response to whatever it was whatever I was doing was like yeah, maybe it's because you've been working out and you're fitter now. And I was like, oh, oh yeah. yeah, what was that? What <laughs> I was can't that? remember. Yeah. I can't remember what it oh, was. Oh, uh, that was it. It was carrying a surfboard. Oh, uh, yeah, no, yeah, carrying the, because uh, I, t- I took the blue board because we were going somewhere and I didn't want to uh, damage, destroy, uh, destroy my one, new yeah. one. Mm. And uh, we were taking someone else and they wanted to have a go on it as well. So, uh, yeah it was that and yeah. um so i took the blue board and i carried it really easy and Leighton was like yeah maybe it's just because you're stronger and fitter and i was yeah. like oh uh, yeah i wondered why my jeans fit <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah so that was brilliant and as we said on before if you want to sign up to alan's program you can get 25 percent discount off it by using the code uk surf show home and that is for the home edition or UK surf show gym. And that is for the gym edition. And that code will get you 25% off his training program. That is a bargain. It's cheap as chips as it that is. That is a bargain, yeah. It's, because it's like tuppence and eightpenny. Yeah, you, you, you'd pay the money for it. What? what? <laughs> tuppence and why? <laughs> I don't even know why you said that. Um, but he's getting, you're getting 25% off and you're going to be trained by somebody who trains Olympic athletes. So I have this running joke with my son whenever we're, you know, he's like coming up 15 now, so he thinks he's hard as nails. 
and um you know you go and have a, like a bit of a bit of a play fight or whatever and, and before we do it I go be careful because technically I am an Olympian and he's like what are you talking about I go well I've been trained by somebody who trains at Olympians so by default surely that makes me an Olympian <laughs> and he's like does he say Technically, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> well, not in those words. I'm sure he does behind my back. But <laughs> uh, he does. He rings me up and tells me. <laughs> uh, yeah, but that was absolutely brilliant. We hope you enjoyed that. I know a lot of you enjoyed the first part of it because, my God, the amount of emails and messages were just ridiculous. When's part two coming out? When's part two coming out? Can't yeah. you release it quicker? Yeah, he's, um, he's given a lot of information away for nothing, really. Yeah, and if you that. check out his Instagram at um, adrenaline.athlete, he puts posts up on there that give you like training tips as well. It's absolutely priceless, the yeah. information that he's given. And it really does help. Yep. Yeah. So we can go through our discount codes because we have a ton of them now. So we've got our show sponsors of today, and that is Golden Boy, Golden B U O Y. And that will get you 10% off at Golden Boy, and that is UK Surf Show. And our North Core discount code is SS2021, and that will get you 15% off anything you order also head across to the log fin co and use the uk surf show 10 and that'll get you 10 percent off anything from the log fin co and seeing it's a fitness episode we also have a discount code for pulse roll so if you don't know what pulse roll is it's a company that does massage guns and vibrating foam rollers so if you've seen those online they look like a, uh, a, a bit like a gun new, yeah like a pneumatic drill yeah um, and it basically massages your muscles. So you can get 20% off if you go over to pulseroll.com and use the code SURF20. Yeah, so I think that's all the discount codes, all the information. Ever. Ever. <laughs> There's only one thing left to say. i got nothing left. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, see you later, mate.